Hi guys, Ghost Dog here, and some people have asked me a little bit about recently about how ECM works uh, in Falcon BMS, so I thought I'm terrible at explaining these things. I'm going to show you. Uh, I found this video on YouTube. It's a US Navy 1962 uh, video on uh, that's declassified on ECM. So let me explain a little bit about how it works and uh, what you, how you're going to use it in, in Falcon BMS. And that should hopefully help you guys out a bit, okay? Now, Now, what, these, or what ECM is going to do is it's going to confuse, frustrate, and deceive radar and their operators. And it's going to do that for with a very simple system, really. Uh, what the radar receiver will see when ECM is turned on, well, it is going to look a little something like this. I'm going to look on the radar scope and see, oh my god, all these dots. And as you get closer and closer and closer, they're going to see more dots. Now, What's happening is the radar jammer is providing more and more data to the radar as you get closer. Let's see how this works. So as you fly closer to the radar, let's, uh, let's imagine this is the radar itself. The longest lobe at the front there is the radar energy pointing right at you. Now the plane's in range of the radar receiver. So at this distance, only when it's pointed straight at you is it going to detect you. The other lines there are side lobes. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about the area. But how radar's working, it's sending out the beam, it's pa passing it back to you, and boom, there's a dot. Radar operator has range and bearing and distance on you, right? Well, here's where the ECM pod kicks in. Watch this. So, the ECM pod transmits another dot. And now the radar has two dots. Well, it gets a bit more complicated than that. You see, the ECM pod doesn't just transmit one dot. It transmits lots of dots. And it transmits them at slightly different intervals. Slightly random intervals. Slightly higher and slightly lower frequencies. And the more and more pulses the radar operator sends out, the more confusing the data gets. But just remember that radar screen is spinning. So the ECM pod is now actually going to start transmitting out side lobes of the radar. Because remember the radar's got a semicircular part into it. So some of the radar imagery doesn't go straight forward, some of it goes out to the sides. And the ECM pod transmits back to those as well. Now you'll note there that the radar is outside of being detected by that dot. The ECM pod is still transmitting uh, not loud, loud enough to that the radar receiver hears that dot. And now what you're seeing there is multiple dots on their screen at once, at the same time. So now you see how as you get closer, the radar operator is seeing more and more and more information. And less and less of it is you. This only works up to a point, because you have something known as radar burner through which this uh, video here will we'll cover in a little while. It also gets very complicated as you fly closer because the dot that represents you is going to be slightly brighter than the rest. That's not modelled in this training video. And to be honest, if you're flying this close to the enemy and you've still got your ECM pod on, chances are they know that you're there. It gets even more complicated when there's multiple radars, of course, because multiple radars will find the same jamming source and may be able to pinpoint it down, but that's not really modelled in BMS, so we don't worry about that too much. Okay, so let's just imagine what happens if you turn on your transmitter, your ECM, when you're outside of the range of the circle. Well, the ECM's loud enough, louder than your plane, remember, that you're actually giving it location data. And at this distance, it's over a very narrow bearing, so you can expect a lot of MIGs getting sent roughly that direction. Obviously, as you get closer, eventually you start showing up on the radar, and that's when you use the ECM. So, you only use your ECM when you're at or near where you're going to get detected. And as a result, radar operator has less precise bearing information and far more radar dots when they weren't expecting any. Now it gets more complicated because in a real world situation you're going to have multiple radars catching you, right? 
every one additional radar frequency that you turn on the jammer for means that the radar operators have more work to find you but also your ECM pod is dividing its radar power over multiple sets. A nifty trick that the ECM has is it can be used to break the lock on uh, ground controlled radar and air to air radar as well. There are a few different techniques that are way outside the scope of BMS. You do not need to know half of the stuff that this naval film shows you, but it's quite entertaining anyway. And basically what will happen is the ECM pod uses some very clever techniques to transmit false data and basically force the radar to get the wrong range or the wrong bearing. So that when a fire control radar locks you up, it hopefully sends it to the wrong location. Uh, here's a good example here. This is what's known as range gating. And things are some, I think the, if I remember right, this is the SA2. So what the range gating will do is it will constantly adjust the radar beam so that you're always pointed at it. What the ECM pod does by transmitting different uh, frequencies at different intervals is it forces the radar to go off track. You use this with chaff and flare to give it multiple returns and the radar fire control system will just eventually just throw the SAM system off its range ever so slightly and it gets pushed further and further back making it no longer a threat to you. We're also going to have a, ba a very bad day against certain other missiles like the R-77 which can home on jam. So what a home on jam missile will do, as its name implies, is that it can find you from the fact that you're broadcasting on a jammer. It will follow you all the way to the point of impact, i.e. your plane, and uh, it will generally give you a bad day. So just bear in mind guys, if you see either one of these turn up on your RWR, and the uh, and you have reason to believe that they're going to be carrying R seventy sevens. Don't bother with the ECM pod. Don't even turn it on. You're actually going to cause yourself more problems, not less. Okay. I hope that's really helped. I hope that keeps you in the air just a little bit longer. Until then, go stock out. <laughs>